Compass makes it more convenient to generate style sheets using SAS by providing you with useful mix-ins, functions, and more. And with the new Compass Rails gem, it's easier than ever to integrate with the Rails asset pipeline. Let me show you. Here I have a simplified version of the Railscast site design, and I would like to use Compass to improve the underlying styling for this application. To add Compass to a Rails app, just go under the Assets group in your gem file and add the Compass Rails gem into here, and you'll need to make sure to run the bundle command to install it. Next, go into your app assets style sheets directory and rename the application CSS file so that you add the .scss extension to it. This turns it into a SAS interpreted file. Now this is necessary so that we have a centralized location where we can load Compass in and then share it across all other SAS files. Sprockets doesn't give us that flexibility, so we don't want to use Sprockets to load our style sheet files, so I'm just going to delete the manifest here. And instead, I'm going to use SAS to import the necessary files. So first I'll load in Compass here, and then I can load in any other files inside of my project, such as this layout SAS file. I'll just pass in layout there. Now you may need to restart your Rails app for it to pick up the Compass gem, but then after that and reloading the application, it looks the same. And that's what we want, because now we have the ability to use Compass to improve our SAS. Now when I added that import Compass line to my application, it provides the following Compass features, including making it more convenient to work with CSS3, so I don't have to specify all the browser vendor prefixes for doing a border radius or a box shadow and so on. Now in my application, I'm using a gradient, and gradients are documented under the images section and here you can see how to use Compass to add a CSS3 gradient. Well, let's try this out. Let's use Compass to generate the gradient in this navigation bar. And you can see that styling is handled by my layout SAS file. Under a navbar section, you can see the gradient is handled right here, and I'm currently specifying all these browser vendor prefixes. But with Compass, I don't need to do that anymore. Instead, to use Compass, I just need to prefix this with include, and then pass in uh, the linear gradient as an argument into a background image like this, and it will do the same thing but generate all the browser vendor prefixes for me. And now we could try this out by reloading this page, and our gradient still looks good here in Safari, and if we check out our generated application CSS file, you can see all the gradients are present here for all the browser vendor prefixes. It works! Now if all you need out of Compass are these CSS3 conveniences, you may want to use Bourbon instead, like I show in episode 330, but Compass provides a whole lot more, including CSS sprites. First of all, what are CSS sprites? Well, you can see on this page there are several icons here for subscribing to Railscasts in a variety of ways, such as iTunes, Twitter, and so on. And if you view the resources for this page, you can see each of these icons is a separate image. Now, each of these will require a separate request to fetch the image, and generally you want to reduce the number of requests made by the client on a given page. So if we merge all these icons down into a single image, it will just perform one request, and then we can selectively choose which part of that image to show for each icon using CSS. So that's how CSS sprites work. It's a pain to do manually, but it's very easy with Compass. Let me show you. Now if you check out the layout style sheet, you can see the icon images are currently being handled by background image in CSS. I'm using image URL here to point to the proper icon uh, under the assets images icons directory here. Now the first step if you haven't already is to take all the images that you want to merge into a single sprite image and place them all in a directory like I have here. Next, you can load the images into Compass by calling import and then passing in the path. In this case, icon slash everything.ping, and then that will load up all the images under this icons directory here and make a single sprite image. And then there are a couple of different ways that you can use this. I'll show you the more manual approach first, and that is to go wherever you are using a background image for the icon like I am here, and then replacing that with a call to include, and then you want to specify the name of the, the directory that the images are under, in this case icons, and then dash sprite, and then the name of the file, in this case, iTunes. And so you'll do that for each one here. There we go, that looks good. Now let's see what this did in the browser. Now reloading the page looks the same for the icons, but if we check the resources, you can see that all of the icons are now merged down to a single image, so it can pull them all down with a single request, and then pull out the parts that it needs using CSS. 
Now, Compass provides a more convenient way to do this. Instead of loading each of these sprites individually into a separate CSS class like this, we can do it all through Compass. So we no longer need to reference this all here, and instead, under this import line, we can just say include, and then all, dash, and then the name of the directory, in this case icons, then dash sprites. So this will automatically make a separate CSS class for us for each of these images. We'll just need to change the HTML to reference them. So here's what my layout file looks like where I'm displaying those icons. And I just need to change the class here to use the class that Compass generates. And that's very easy. It's just prefixed with the name of the directory, in this case icons, and then dash, and then the name of the image, such as iTunes. And we'll just change the rest of these as well so that they match what Compass generates. And now if I reload the page here, you can see it still looks the same with all the icons. And if I check out the generated application CSS file, uh, you can see all of the classes are here defined, referencing the proper portion of that image in CSS. For more information on sprites, check out the Spriting with Compass tutorial. And really, all the documentation on Compass is pretty good, so just browsing around the reference and help section is a great way to sort of get an idea of what else Compass provides because there are a lot of little miscellaneous utility functions that are really useful. For example, under utilities lists here, there's a horizontal list feature that I find quite useful because horizontal lists are something you need to do quite frequently to change a list into maybe a navigation menu. So you can just include this horizontal list uh, mixin. This is something that I do in this application where I have this horizontal class that just displays a list of items horizontally for navigation menus. And so I can just replace this CSS code here with a call to include horizontal uh, list, and then Compass will handle it for me. And reloading the page here, you can see wherever there's a horizontal list, which is the icons, and in the menu here, it still displays it horizontally. I may need to adjust some of the padding and spacing, but it got us mostly there. Now another useful feature is Compass Reset, because browsers may have different default values for sizing and spacing for various tags and a reset will set everything down to zero so you can build it back up to help make a consistent design between various browsers. To add this, just go to your application SAS file and then add a line in here to import compass slash reset. Now this is one of the few import compass commands that'll actually insert CSS code into your layout. So just be aware of that because it's going to clear out all the default values. So with that in place, watch this welcome h1 tag when I reload this page you can see that it stripped it back down to just normal plain text. Now, your, your site will probably look pretty bad right after you add the reset because uh, it's relying on browser defaults, but this way you can build it back up to look the way you want without relying on the defaults. So going into my layout SAS file, I might add something like this, where I define specifically how I want an H1 tag to look. And then reload the page, and we're back in business. Now, I don't think CSS resets are necessarily a good thing all the time. I think for each project, you just have to ask yourself how important it is that a design be consistent between browsers. For an alternative to Compass Reset, check out Normalize CSS. This has defaults that are closer in line to browser defaults, so you may not need to rebuild everything up from scratch. Well, that's it for this episode on Compass. Now, many things I did not cover here, so check out the website for further details. For example, Compass comes with Blueprint, which is an entire CSS framework for building grid-based designs. Also, check out the README for the Compass Rails gem for some alternative approaches to integrate them together. And also, especially if you're using earlier versions of Rails, there's some caveats mentioned there. Finally, I want to mention that Compass is very modular, so even though it is a large framework, you can just choose to include and import the bits and pieces that you do use. Well. Thanks for watching this episode on Compass. I hope you find it useful. In the pro episode this week, I will show you how to deploy a Rails application from scratch to a VPS. There I will use Nginx, Unicorn, RubyEnv, Postgres, and more. So if you're struggling with deploying a Rails application and want a nice pattern to follow, check it out. To watch that episode and all other pro and revised episodes, just head on over to railscast.com pro and then sign up there for just $9 per month.